everybody. I want to give another installment on my teaching on loving God. This will be part four, and I want to call it the danger of self-love. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors and heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. There is a heresy which has encompassed the entire world in the last hundred years, which comprises as great a threat to the truth of the gospel as anything ever seen before in Christian history. I speak of the discipline of psychology. Psychology purports to be the study of the soul and thus claims to be a science. In fact, that is what the word psychology actually means, the study of the suke, which is the Greek for soul. The problem with this definition and the discipline which grew out of it in the previous century is the fact that the soul of man is not material, it is spiritual, therefore one can't, quote, study, unquote, the soul as one would study insects, clouds, rocks, or history. The originators of psychology were, for the most part, atheists, such as Sigmund Freud. The human brain is material and the human brain is material and can be studied in the scientific method, but not the mind. The mind is not the brain. It belongs to the province of spirituality and requires revelation from God in order to know it. Abstract realities such as love, mercy, justice, and righteousness, these are not chemical reactions. They are spiritual concepts which require divine revelation to understand as well. We are not going to learn more about our own souls from atheists such as uh, Freud and Jung and Maslow uh, when, when the, that's a spiritual concept. What, what would an atheist know about spirituality? They don't believe in it. The reason I bring this up in this series of articles about loving God is because modern Western society has been inundated and saturated with this relatively new religion of psychology. Its presuppositions are currently the conventional wisdom. It has supplanted the curricula of our schools and universities in the West, and its many schools of thought are de facto rivals of the teaching of the soul, which was once the product, province of the church. Psychology has crowded out the traditional Western reliance on the council once found in the church. I'm not saying the church has always done things right. Uh, they, they, uh, they're still human beings. There have been many... Uh, defections from truth even in the church. But for the most part, uh, the churches themselves have actually succumbed to the psychological approaches to, to, to human problems. And whether they realize it or not, they've jettisoned the Bible in the process. Now, it's not my intention to go into detail on the whole subject of psychology. Maybe we can really get into it sometime. My point is, that at the very core of nearly all of the various schools of psychology, this rival to Christianity, is an emphasis to the point of idolatry on the self. Now, having come of age in the 1970s, many of us, like me, all throughout our schooling years, were bombarded with concepts such as self-actualization, self-esteem, self-introduction, self-discovery, self-love, etc., 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 ad nauseum. There was even a popular magazine called Self, and the, I remember reading that the government of California completely revamped the state school system completely around the concept of self-esteem. I mean, one commentator quipped, the average uh, student in California is like last in math, last in science, last in reading, but they are first place in self-esteem in world competitions. Genesis tells us that man was made in the image of God. And this infers that the meaning of man's life is to seek to know God and to reflect that image. As one of the catechisms rightly said, 
Man's chief end is to know and enjoy God forever. Now, the account of what happened in the Garden of Eden in Genesis 3 is a God-given revelation of how Satan was able to manipulate our first parents, turning them away from the knowledge of God into an inordinate interest in themselves. Even Adam did not consult God or each other when they transgressed. They were already acting as gods in their own right, deciding for themselves what good would be. In the process of reaching for that better self by plucking the fruit that God had commanded them not to eat, they trampled underfoot love for God in the pursuit of self-love and self-improvement. I remember that uh, when I was a child, I had friends whose parents got divorced because they were counseled that it's very important to do this for yourself, to be true to yourself, and that if you're not happy in that situation, then you owe it to yourself and to everybody else to get a divorce. You see, this, this is the self-revolution. The gospel of Jesus flies in the face of the self-idolatry which is what all of humanity is so prone to. Coming back to God through Jesus involves saying no to self. The entire Christian journey, if you think about it, is a constant self-denunciation. At the beginning of a valid Christian pilgrimage, we're saying no to our self-righteousness and admitting that we're sinners worthy of death. What is a baptism if not a burial of self? If we're subject to proper Christian doctrine, we're then constantly challenged in, in true teaching to cast aside our own way and to follow Jesus. We must not trust our own heart. We are instead told that our own heart is wicked, desperately deceitful, and that we now must allow the word to retrain and renew our minds. Furthermore, we see that we no longer live for ourselves, but for him who gave himself for us. We don't seek to know ourselves. Our pursuit is to know Jesus and the Father. This is our whole life's pursuit. Ironically, only by coming to the knowledge of Jesus and God and seeking God, only by that way can we ever even begin to know ourselves. For almost the hundred years that it's been in existence, Psychology has saturated the church and infiltrated its teaching, turning people away from God and into themselves. This is why today's church is rife with mega churches which cater to people's quote felt needs and promoting books such as Your Best Life Now and conferences abound on inner healing and past regression therapy, self-esteem, and a host of other psychologically related topics. There are subjects that are common in churches, commonly taught as if it's Christian doctrine, such as unconditional love, positive confession, healing of memories, which come directly from psychology, not from the Bible, and yet almost overnight became integrated into Christian teaching from the 1970s on as if they were biblical studies or bi 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 biblical, uh, excuse me, biblical concepts. Uh, this has got to be demonic. These parts of the Bible, those parts of the Bible which emphasize self-denunciation, such as the depravity of man, the vanity of human wisdom, the condemnation of pride, the need for humility, they have often been ridiculed and denounced as, quote, worm theology, unquote. Worship also has become man-centered in so many churches, and one would be forgiven for mistaking some worship services for concerts. Even the content of the songs tends to center around the self rather than the theologically rich, God-centered songs, hymns, and spiritual songs of the past. It is not uncommon to walk into an evangelical church where the sanctuary is basically painted black, where there are spotlights on the uh, breathless singers, which are usually very, very young people, often in uh, torn jeans and with hats on and uh, expressing their own self-individuality and breathlessly singing what passes for Christian worship these days. It's a shame. Like I said, we could go back we should go back to the theologically rich, God-centered, 
songs and hymns and spiritual songs of the past. In fact, I'm happy to say that people are going back to those. We must renounce humanism and learn again to love God. We have to learn to abase ourselves before him. What is left of the church must become centered on God. We have to want to know him, to learn of his attributes and perfections, to fix our souls on God himself and on the person of Jesus Christ. For the truth is there's no higher subject for any of us to fix our minds on. This is life eternal, Jesus prayed that they might know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. John 17, 